in situ conservation in protected areas in situ conservation is the on site conservation of plants and animals in their natural environment so it involves the conservation of total ecosystems in protected areas protected areas are distinct areas of land and sea identified managed and preserved for the long term protection and conservation of biodiversity including ecosystem services and the socio cultural heritage of mankind ecosystem services and the socio cultural heritage of mankind in this area so resident species natural ecosystems ecological processes resident species will get protected natural ecosystems we going to protect and ecological processes and ecosystem services are well protected protected areas fall under two main categories terrestrial and aquatic terrestrial protected areas include national parks wildlife sanctuaries biosphere reserves natural world heritage sites conservation reserves community reserves biodiversity heritage sites important bird areas trans boundary protected areas wilderness areas natural monuments species management areas protected landscapes etc the main conservation activities in terrestrial protected areas are the following maintenance of the viable population of all native species and subspecies maintenance of habitats and communities unchanged maintenance of the genetic diversity of all existing species preservation and i'm sorry prevention of the introduction of exotic species by man so these are the main conservation activities in terrestrial protected areas aquatic protected areas include ramsar wetland sites and important coastal protected areas or icmpa marine protected areas are mainly the intertidal and subtidal regions marine protected areas are concerned with the following activities protection and recovery of protection and recovery or rebuilding of the depleted populations of marine organisms protective protection and maintenance of critical habitats and endangered species maintenance of the biodiversity and ecological processes of marine and coastal ecosystems sustainable exploitation and utilization of marine resources sustainable exploitation and utilization of marine resources restoration of degraded marine and coastal habitats currently there are one or three national parks 543 wildlife sanctuaries 18 biosphere reserves 8 natural world heritage site 73 conservation reserves 45 community reserves 9 biodiversity heritage sites and 467 important bird areas 26 ramsar wetland sites and 131 marine protected areas in india 103 national parks 543 wildlife sanctuaries 18 biosphere reserves 8 natural world heritage sites 73 conservation and reserves 45 community reserves 4 biodiversity heritage sites 467 important bird areas 26 ramsar wetland sites and 131 marine protected areas so first one is the national parks so which are the major points in situ conservation is on site conservation of plants and animals here we are protecting the ecosystem services along with socio cultural heritage of mankind in this area as resident species natural ecosystems ecological processes and ecosystem services are well protected land in case of this is of two types namely terrestrial and aquatic protected areas so terrestrial protected areas include national park wildlife sanctuaries biosphere reserves natural world heritage sites conservation reserves community reserves biodiversity heritage sites along with 
important bird areas, transboundary protected areas, wilderness areas, natural monuments, species management areas, protected landscape, etc. To conserve the terrestrial places, maintenance of the viable populations of all native species and subspecies is very important, and maintenance of habitats and communities unchanged. Prevention of introduction of exotic species by man and the maintenance of the genetic diversity of all existing species will be conducted. And aquatic protected areas include Ramsar wetland sites and important <coughs> coastal protected areas. These are the intertidal and subtidal regions which are very important and we will be protecting them. Protection and the recovery or rebuilding of the depleted population of marine organisms is very important and protection and maintenance of critical habitats and endangered species will be conducted and maintenance of the biodiversity and ecological processes of marine and coastal ecosystems, sustainable exploitation and utilization of marine resources, restoration of degraded marine and coastal habitats. So first in situ method is by conservation by national parks national parks is an area which is set aside for the protection and conservation of outstanding natural fauna flora geological formations and natural sceneries hunting killing or capturing of animals deprivation of habitat for any wild animal and destruction and collection of flora are all prohibited in national park except for the improvement and the better management of the wildlife therein. Grazing of livestock is not allowed. No human activity is permitted inside the national park except those permitted by the chief wildlife warden of the state under the provisions given in Chapter 4 Wildlife Protection Act 1972. The largest national park in the world is the North East Greenland National Park established in 1947. The first declared Indian National Park is Haley National Park now known as Jim Corbett National Park in Uttarakhand which was established in 1936. So which are the main points? National Park is a conservation area for conserving outstanding natural fauna, flora, geological formations and natural sceneries here all sort of killing hunting or capturing of animals deprivation of habitat for any wild animal destruction and collection of flora and all prohibited grazing of livestock is not allowed grazing of livestock is not allowed no human activity is permitted but only permitted with the written permission of chief wildlife warden chief wildlife warden of the state chief wildlife warden of the chief i'm sorry state chief wildlife warden of state The largest national park in the world is the Northeast Greenland National Park. Northeast Greenland National Park. The first declared Indian National Park is Haley National Park, now known as Jim Corbett National Park. Next is the Wildlife Sanctuaries. This is an in situ method of conservation. Wildlife Sanctuary is an area set apart for the preservation of wildlife under natural conditions. In it, killing, hunting or capturing of any species is prohibited. In India, sanctuary is usually established by an order or gazette notification of the state government. State government. So, the demerit of a sanctuary is that it can be denotified merely by an order or gazette notification of the state government. This is the main difference between a national park and sanctuary. In addition, removal or exploitation of wildlife or forest produced from a sanctuary requires the recommendation of the State Board of Wildlife. State Board of Wildlife. While such activities in a national park requires the recommendation of the National Board of 
code for wildlife sanctuaries is under state government supervision next major one is the biosphere reserve biosphere reserve biosphere reserves are protected areas where all biological species are given protection and multiple land use is permitted they are established by the countries in which they are located and recognized by unesco's man and biosphere mab program man and biosphere mab program the protected species include wild populations native tribals cultivated plants and domesticated animals the concept of biosphere reserve was launched by the unesco in 1987 as a part of man and man and biosphere program its prime objectives are the conservation of all forms of life and their support systems and the promotion of sustainable development based on the effort of local community it also seeks to bring man and nature together to preserve natural and nature resources a biosphere reserve has three zones or areas namely core zone buffer zone and transition zone or manipulation zone in the core zone no human activity is permitted in the buffer zone limited human activity is permitted and in the manipulation zone free human activities are permitted which are the three zones core zone then the buffer zone along with the manipulation or transition zone transition zone okay at present there are 631 biosphere reserves around the world located in 19 19 countries in india 18 areas have so far been notified as biosphere reserves nilgiri biosphere reserve nilgiri biosphere reserve nanda devi biosphere reserve uttarakhand biosphere reserve northwest himalayas and northeastern himalayas nokrak biosphere reserve etc are some of them don't forget the nanda devi biosphere reserve along with nilgiri biosphere reserve in india nilgiri biosphere reserve is the first declared one it was formed on 23 9 as per the guidelines of unesco it spreads over kerala karnataka and tamil nadu its area is approximately 5670 km square <coughs> it covers the forests in nilgiris periyar nilambur silent valley vayanad <coughs> nagarpur bandipur mudumalai and siruvar this include torn shrub forests jai deciduous forests moist deciduous forests wet evergreen forests mundane forests and grasslands the common animals include elephant goat lion tailed macaque sloth bear pangolin and nilgiri thar next major type of in situ conservation is the conservation reserves and community reserves conservation reserves are community co-managed biodiversity rich areas particularly close to existing protected areas they serve as a buffer zone or corridor to establish a continuous protected area network conservation reserves can be declared only on government owned lands like some conservation reserves in tamil nadu community reserves are used in category 5 privately or community owned areas managed by the community reserves are under category first one was the conservation reserves that is the main points in conservation reserves co managed biodiversity rich areas iucn category 
and they are particularly close to existing protected areas they serve as buffer zones or corridors to establish a continuous protected area network this reserves can be declared only on government owned lands so that is about conservation reserves conservation reserves you see in category 4 particularly close to existing protected areas buffer zones or corridors government owned lands next is the community reserves you see in category 5 privately or community owned areas managed by the individuals or communities in possession of the area example kadalundi velikunna community reserve in kerala both conservation reserves and community type reserves allow the extraction of natural resources the levels of which are decided by a multi stakeholder reserve management community A conservation reserve management committee consists of representatives from a local village panchayat, non-government organization or NGOs, and the Department of Agriculture and Animal Husbandry. Similarly, a community reserve management committee consists of five representatives nominated by the local village panchayat or gram sabha and one representative from the state department of forest and wildlife. A chairman would be elected by the committee, and he would also serve as the wildlife warden of the reserve this reserve mark a shift towards a more inclusive and decentralized approach within the protected area network in them management entails collective participation of multiple stakeholders and example of community based management next is the important bird areas or ibas birds are excellent indicators of ecosystem health The IBA program of BirdLife International aims to identify, monitor, and protect a global network of IBAs for the conservation of the world's birds and associated biodiversity. The IBAs serve as conservation areas for the protection of birds at global, regional, or sub-regional level. IBAs consist of a range of habitats such as wetlands, wetlands, mud flats, micro habitats. in biodiversity hotspots grasslands and scrublands making them excellent indicators of biodiversity richness the bombay natural history society and bird life international have identified 467 ibas in india 40% of this ibas fall outside the protected area network and thus form an important tool for landscape level conservation planning here we are focusing on the landscape level conservation plan next is the marine protected areas or mpas the marine protected areas network in india has been used as a tool to manage natural marine resources for biodiversity conservation and also for the well being of the people dependent on it Scientific monitoring and traditional observation confirm that depleted natural marine resources are getting restored and pristine ecological conditions are maintained in well managed MAPs that is the marine protected areas altogether there are 131 marine protected areas in peninsular india and countries islands dedicated efforts are required to ensure community participation in managing the marine protected area network in india marine protected area network next major in, in situ mode is the world heritage sites these are internationally well known biodiversity areas identified by the world heritage committee identified by world heritage committee they include four major types of areas as follows wilderness areas wilderness areas large areas protected less stringently with than biodiversity reserves 
natural monuments small area selected to protect natural monuments and their surrounding areas species management areas species areas selected for the conservation of certain habitats or species which require constant protection then the protected landscapes and seascapes specified areas of land or sea selected for the protection and interaction of neighboring communities then the features of which are the four major types wilderness areas natural monuments species management areas protected landscapes and seascapes wilderness areas natural monuments species management areas protected landscapes and seascapes features of world heritage sites world heritage sites contain constituents which represent the different stages of the geological evolution of earth contain typical examples for geophysical and biological evolution have rare unique and biologically interesting features contain typical examples for geophysical and biological evolution contain rare and critically endangered plants and animals in india there are eight wild world heritage sites seven natural and one mixed type let's look at the eight natural world heritage sites in india great himalayan national park conservation area in himachal pradesh western ghats gujarat maharashtra goa karnataka tamil nadu and kerala nanda devi biosphere reserve and the valley of flowers national park uttarakhand sundarbans national park west bengal kasiranga national park in assam Kyolaryu National Park in Rajasthan, Manas Wildlife Sanctuary, Naza, and the Kasiranga National Park, Sikkim. That is a mixed World Heritage Site. There are three types of World Heritage Sites, namely Cultural, Natural, and Mixed Type. Cultural Heritage Sites include historic buildings and town sites important archaeological sites and monumental works of sculpture or paintings natural heritage sites are restricted to those natural areas that furnish outstanding examples of earth's record of life or its geological process provides excellent examples for ongoing ecological and biological evolutionary process contain natural phenomena that are rare unique superlative or of outstanding beauty furnish habitats for rare or endangered animals or plants or are sites of exceptional biodiversity mixed heritage sites contain elements of both natural and cultural significance so in this session we have learned about different sort of in situ conservation in protected areas first one was national park along with the wildlife sanctuaries then the biosphere reserves conservation reserves and community reserves important bird areas marine protected areas world heritage sites and so again let's look at them national parks wildlife sanctuaries biosphere reserves conservation reserves and community reserves along with important world areas and marine protected areas and world heritage sites